Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the first generation iPhone SE and see how this device holds up in 2023. Now, one thing I will definitely tell you is this was probably one of my favorite phones of all time and one of my favorite lineups of all time from Apple for one generation. Since then, I truly do feel like Apple has lost their way and there's not really a big reason to pick up these iPhones anymore for the most part, but I will tell you at that moment back in 2016 when this iPhone came out, it was a smash hit, at least in my opinion. Again, it wasn't trying to go ahead and compete with those bigger type of iPhones. It was supposed to be in its own lane, and I think for that perspective, Apple did a decent job. Now, if you want to pick up some phones, I would recommend this year. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the iPhone SE first generation, this device, again, had that four inch display and its body was very reminiscent of the previous, you know, iPhone 5S and the kind of like the iPhone 5 a little bit. But again, and this was what it was going for. It was supposed to be a cheaper iPhone, and that 4-inch display at that time really wasn't that bad. When you had phones like the 4.7-inch iPhone, you know, 6 and iPhone 6S, then you had that 4 point or that, you know, 5.5-inch iPhone 7 Plus, iPhone 6S Plus, iPhone 6 Plus, not that big of a deal, and I was really happy that Apple, at least at that moment, was still keeping their smaller iPhones. And even up until, like, uh, not even, like, two years ago, this was still, or three years ago, this was still one of the, like, more important phones Apple made because it was that smaller option. So personally, I think that was pretty cool. Again, not a big deal, but it's just another one of those things to kind of keep in mind at the end of the day that, you know, Apple did kind of want this phone to go ahead and be, I guess, its own lineup different than what Apple was doing for their main flagships. Now we had Touch ID 1 on the front. We had pretty thick bezels all throughout, which is kind of expected. On the bottom of this phone, we do have that lightning port as well as that headphone jack, which personally for me, it's not that big of a deal. Having those, you know, ports is awesome. I like having the headphone jack. It used to be a big deal though, but nowadays like I've truly kind of gotten used to it and it's really not as big of a deal as it used to be in my opinion. Now on the back, you have this, you know, standard back that we used to have, you know, totally okay. It definitely still feels very premium, does not feel cheap at all or anything even remotely close to that. So I think that's still one cool thing that this one has going for it. You had these two like glass parts at the very top and the very bottom that actually looked pretty cool. And again, like I was a fan of that. Having that type of build quality and this type of phone was really cool. And I think that at the end of the day is still one of my favorite things about this device for sure. Now on the top, you had that single camera setup as well. Some things you were missing on this phone though, you were missing like, you know, wireless charging. You were also missing, you know, another big thing, you know, an IP certification, which this phone also did not have. So that was another pretty crazy thing as well. Again, is it the biggest deal in the world? No, but it was one of those things that was just kind of a little different. So in terms of the outside, that kind of covers it up there. Now, in terms of the actual camera quality and just a little bit of a camera review, this phone, like I mentioned, when it first came out and, you know, up until now, it had that 12 megapixel standard camera and it had a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. Now, one thing I did like about this specific phone was that, you know, it did have 4K lens on the back and you could do 720p video on the front. Now, that camera nowadays does not sound that astounding, seems fairly basic for the most part, but you have to remember back then in the day in 2016 when this phone came out, this was a really good spec out phone for the price tag. This thing wasn't trying to compete for the with like the most expensive iPhones. It was supposed to compete with the fairly cheaper ones. Like it was supposed to keep compete with like I think like this cheaper Nexuses of that time and whatnot. Like maybe some budget Samsung phones. Like it was supposed to compete with those. So so I totally see where Apple was coming from. And you know in my opinion this was a pretty decent deal. You know from the camera side, it is missing a lot of cool features we have nowadays like portrait mode and cinematic mode and whatnot. But for the most part, I still think this is a pretty decent camera and it wouldn't be a reason why you know I would have not bought that phone back in the day but nowadays you know it's a fairly older styling of camera and I think we all can agree with that so in terms of that that kind of covers it up there now another big thing that this phone had kind of going for it was actually with the software updates so because the internals were pretty much the same exact thing almost as the iPhone 6s you know in the 6s plus this iPhone actually ended up kind of becoming that much of a better, I guess, specced out phone because internally it was almost the same thing as the iPhone 6s. And it came out kind of right after the iPhone 6s as well, but like before the iPhone 7. So I think that was a really good approach Apple did. And since then, they've kind of been continuing that 
but that does bring us to the software and longevity portion, which is a little bit more sad. So this phone, I mean, take it as you will, but it's been discontinued or like unsupported with software since the last year. And that was a very, very sad thing. For this phone though, it wasn't as sad because I kind of saw it coming, but with the iPhone 7, that was way more sad to be honest. But with this device, you know, it is what it is. It's been unsupported for about six months, but it's still getting software updates. So we do have to kind of remember that. With this phone, it's still not necessarily supported, but it's still sticking around. So I think that's kind of a cool thing to kind of think about is that this older phone from so many years ago is still getting some sort of software updates. So I think that's kind of important, but I think it's even cooler that the iPhone 6 and 7 got another update. But again, the biggest news of last year was that this thing did get discontinued with software. So because of that, it's not really the phone I would recommend buying. You know, you have to kind of keep that in mind. I doubt you want to go and buy a phone that's already unsupported with software. And this is one of those devices, you know, as sad to, as it is to say. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now, in terms of the actual performance of this phone, internally, this phone, like I said, was pretty much built the same thing as the iPhone 6S. So it had that Apple A9 chip inside of it with two gigabytes of RAM. Now, I personally do think that that type of specs inside of a phone is actually pretty decent. Like that is actually a really good, I guess, quality phone for the most part. And as I mentioned for a few years now, I mean, every time I pick up this phone, it is still a very, very fast phone. It is not slow at all. And I do think that just for the iPhone SE's sake, I mean, that is a very good advantage of having a phone like this. Now, it's not really the fastest phone anymore, but surprisingly, this phone still is very smooth it still performs decently well. And I think that in and of itself is a really cool thing going for this phone. So again, it may not be like the first phone I'd recommend buying in that specific situation, but for basic applications and even maybe even some more, you know, heavier applications as well, I would say it's kind of predictable. Like it's actually not that bad of a performing phone. And again, that is kind of the cooler things going for it. So again, it's not going to be a fast phone anymore, but at that time, back in 2016, it was pretty fast. I mean, it was the fastest iPhone of that moment. You know, when you think about the screen resolution being lower than the 6S and whatnot, there were less pixels to push there. Like this was a very fast phone for how much it cost. So that kind of covers it up in the performance segment as well. Ending it off with the battery life, this thing had a 1,624 milliampere battery. And as I mentioned before, definitely not the smallest size battery, but it was a smaller size battery at that moment. And that's just one thing you have to keep in mind when you're getting a phone like this. It's definitely not going to be the fastest phone of all time. It's definitely going to be, you know, not the best battery life phone of all time either. So you know what you're getting, I would say, with this device. So. In terms of battery life, again, you kind of know what you're getting, and I wouldn't really complain about it too much in that perspective because it is a super small size phone. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. And to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'll tell you is, is that I don't think the first generation iPhone SE is necessarily worth it anymore. I think it would make a lot more sense to go ahead and buy another device potentially more something like it, maybe even like a second gen iPhone SE, but even then I wouldn't recommend going for it. If you can get something like an iPhone XR, iPhone 11, one of those devices, it would make way more sense to go and pick up one of those devices over these ones. I still think these phones are great and everything, but it just doesn't really make too much sense to go and buy them anymore when you do have other phones that are just a little bit more expensive in the used market. So, and that's kind of how I see it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, well done.